exercise 41.11. This exercise is to be solved manually. Consider the region enclosed by the graphs of y equals 2, 4 times the square root of x, 8x plus 3y equals 8, and 40x minus 21y equals 40. Part A. Sketch a quality graph of the described region. And provide a graphic approximation of the area of the region. Part B. Provide a calculus calculation that yields the exact area of the region. Part C. Assess the correctness of parts A and B by examining for consistency between the two results. Part A. Sketch a quality graph of the described region. Provide a graphic approximation of the area of the region. Alright, so this region is enclosed by three graphs. That's a bit complicated, and it's not something I see just immediately as far as deciding what sort of coordinate system to put down and what sort of scaling to use. I think I want to first draw a preliminary thumbnail sketch of the graph before I go to the quality version. So starting uh, here, this is going to be, well, a vertical stretch by a factor of 4 of the uh, semi-parabola y equals square root of x. Okay, here's a straight line. Of course, I can get a couple of intercepts off that. This one, all right, another straight line. I could get a couple intercepts off of this. All right, so for a thumbnail sketch, let's see, what have we got here? Just trying to get some basic idea. All right, for this first one, and by the way, I think I'll just call this y sub 1 in case I need to distinguish it later on. Zero, 0 goes on there. If I picked 1, the square root of 1 would be 1, but times 4 goes up to 4, and I would go out to uh, x equal to 4, the square root of which is 2, times 4, go up to 8, okay, so just roughly something about like this, okay, and then the uh, other situation here, this line, let's see, uh, let y be 0, x is 1, all right, let's let x be 0, y would be 8 thirds. That's two and two thirds. Okay, about up there. All right, so roughly speaking, some straight line about like so. All right, third, this straight line. Uh, let's let y be zero. X would be one. Let's let x be zero. Y would be 40 over negative 21. Okay. Well, that's really close to negative 2 for a thumbnail sketch. Okay, there. Straight line. Hmm. Something like that. The enclosed region looks like something in here. All right, so this gives me my ideas to get started on the real graph. Looks like all the action is in the first quadrant. And it looks like x is running maybe 0 to 10, y 0 to 10 would be a nice way to make the graph fit on the paper and yet be large so that we get a good quality result for our approximation. Okay, I'll go with that. Okay, quality graph will have the intercepts with the coordinates clearly labeled. Uh, the one we have just by graphing was right here. We know this was the point one zero. 
but now we need to obtain this point we need to obtain this point of intersection so now we have a couple little uh, calculations to perform so looks like some systems of equations coming up let's go to that next okay first up the intersection of y equals square root of x and the blue line whose equation is 8x plus 3y equals 8 looks like this is uh, well set up for a substitution so we'll put this 4 square root of x for every y in this other equation. Okay, let's see. Uh, immediately, I guess I want to divide both sides by 4. Now it looks like uh, we have a radical equation, and the stretch here is to 1 isolate a radical, 2 square both sides, and 3 check and discard any extraneous solutions. Okay, so here the easy isolation actually having an integral multiple of the radical is fine you don't want a lot of fractions running around either so maybe like so and then it's time to square both sides this is the step that runs you the risk of extraneous solutions by the way squaring of both sides and let's see here this will give us okay we've headed into a quadratic equation I suppose we set everything equal to zero Let's see, maybe we get a factorization going here. Or actually, first, is this a perfect square trinomial? No chance. Odd number there. Can't possibly be a 2ab. All right, so let's maybe I'll just uh, jump ahead to the 4x and x structure first. And let's see, we need to have two negatives factoring up for 4. And now if we add outer products, inner products, we, uh, we've got negative 17x. Okay, this already looks good. And now we solve each factor equal to zero. This equal to zero. Let's see, that would be x equal to a one-fourth. Or over here, x equals to four. Now, I've got to check for the extraneous solutions part here. We have a graph available to look at. And if we look at the graph of the red line and blue line, we see that they only have one point of intersection for sure, and that one point looks a lot like the one that having the x equal to one fourth and x equal to four is nowhere to be seen. So this is extraneous, and we discard it. Meanwhile, while we have this, what's its corresponding y? Y would equal two. We could go four square roots of one fourth. That would be four times a half, and that would equal two. And you can even look back at the graph and find that, okay, that's even consistent with the graph as well. All right, that's one intersection down. Okay, the other intersection, and that is the red curve and the green curve. And algebraically, that's the intersection of the y equals 2, 4 square roots of x, and 40x minus 21y equal 40. Uh, again, this one, it, as a system goes, it's... Uh, well suited for substitution. Got a y solved for here. Might as well just substitute it in over here. Uh, one nice thing is it looks like both sides divide by 4 immediately. Okay, now it's uh, a radical equation. Let's isolate a radical, or at least a multiple of a radical. Alright, and it's time to square both sides. Okay, it's a quadratic equation. Let's set everything equal to zero. Okay, let's see. Perfect square trinomial. No chance. Odd number here. Okay, cancel that idea. Um, of course, now there are some other things here. Let's see. Let's get things. Fa let's look at the factorization of these things so we can think about all the possibilities. This is 10 by 10, of course, and that means it's 2 by 5, 2 by 5. This is, uh, what, 2 squared, 5 squared, times x squared, in other words. Okay, and this is 2 squared times 5 squared, of course, 100, fully factored. Okay, let's see here. Maybe we uh, will exhaust the idea of the 10x, 10x structure. 
and see what we come up with. All right, uh, let's see here. If we try, well, we could, 10 and 10 we know won't work. What if we tried uh, hmm, 2 and 50? Now they have to be negative. Let's see, outer products. There's negative 500, negative 20, negative 520. Hmm, nope, not working there. Uh, minus 1, minus 100. That would be, well, negative 1,000. Okay, we've overshot. No good there. All right. 10x, 10x structure is just not working. Let's try, um, how about this, 2 by 2 and 5 by 5 together. So a 4x, 25x structure. Okay, and for starters, what if we tried a negative 10, negative 10? That would give us, let's see, an inner products, minus 250. Outer products, negative 40, summing to like negative 290. No, 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 not working at all there. How about if we tried a, let's see, negative 4, negative 25. Now the uh, inner products is negative 100. Outer is negative 100, negative 200. Nope. Maybe the other way around, negative 25, negative 4. Now the inner products, uh, negative 25 by 25, that's negative 625. Outer products, 4 by 4, 16. Oh, okay, there we are. This is working. All right, so it looks like we got ourselves 4x minus 25 by 25x minus 4 equals 0. We were having an equation equal to 0 here. Now we can solve each factor equal to 0. This first one gives us an x equals 2, 25 over 4, or this one will give us an x equals 2, 4 over 25. Now we have to check for extraneous solutions. We have a graph to help us. We are looking back at our graph, and it looks like in the vicinity of 6, there's an intersection, which is very close to 25 fourths. This is looking pretty good. This other one, 4 25ths, okay, that's almost like a 1 -fifth or so. That's not even in sight. This is extraneous and discarded, not a solution after all. Okay, the corresponding y that goes here, that will be, well, we can go 4 square roots of 25 fourths, and that would be 4 times... 5 halves, cancel, cancel, 2 equals 10. Okay, so this gives us the point 25 fourths, 10. Alright, so now we have uh, these two intersection points to label on the graph. Okay, now that about completes the graph of the region. You can check to see that you have all of the individual graphs with their labels as to what they are. Make sure that the enclosed region is clearly shaded and labeled as such, and key points of intersection are all labeled, and of course, as always, the axes are all scaled and labeled as well. All right, pretty complete there. Let's go into this graphic approximation of the area phase of this part A. And now I have to sort of size up some sort of uh, simple plane region that resembles what's sitting here. I would like to take advantage of these two straight lines, which are sort of halfway towards setting up a trapezoid. So like right about here, I'm going to run parallel to the screen line so that I maintain a trapezoid. I think I will even go ahead and make it pass through this point here. We start dashing it in here. Now, let's see how far out to go. Let me first arbitrarily just run this out and then I'll decide. I'm going to come off of this point here, I think. It'd be kind of nice looking. And now, just visually, I want to see this overflow region 
fill in this void region. It looks okay. I think about there will do it. So sketch that in. If you'd white out, you can just erase this if you like. So what I say here is the area of the enclosed region is approximately that of the dashed line trapezoid and that's equal to, okay, area of a trapezoid, just memorize it, average base times height. The average base would be one half of B1 plus B2 and times height or altitude. And now I have to be a little careful here. See the axes? Scaled the same, right? One centimeter equals one unit. So I can have a trapezoid with these bases that are oblique to the x or y axis and just do ruler measurements for everything, that'll be fine. If I don't have these axes scaled the same, a trapezoid like this, I'd have to use a like distance formula and all and that kind of thing to accurately know how far it is between these two points. I can't just ruler measurement anymore. Okay, so this is set up for easy uh measurement. So base one Okay, coming in here, looks like mm, 10.7, base 2, mm, 7.1, hider altitude, okay, 1.6, Okay, so what have we got here? Looks like it's about 14 square units. Want this to be prominent. It's the conclusion of this whole part A, along with the graph. Okay, there we are. Part B. Provide a calculus calculation that yields the exact area of the region. All right, for a calculus calculation, if I were to start thinking about slicing this region up with, say, thin vertical rectangles, that would be a workable strategy. However, the thin vertical rectangles, well, their areas would be, have rather one formulation here, and then as the bottom of the rectangle changes from this point forward, there's another formulation there. And so with two definite integrals, we could sum up all the thin vertical slices here. That's not too bad. However, when the region has, seems to have certain special geometry to it, like this does here, I also want to consider another strategy. Now here, these straight lines, and the idea that I'm beneath this curve, I start to visualize a region that could be composed of Everything below this y equals 4 square roots of x graph starting at x equal to 1 fourth and going to x equals 25 fourths and then subtracting out these two triangular voids, one on the left and one on the right. And I think that will lead to a simpler calculation because the integral will be almost trivial and then two triangles, okay, or one half base times height, those are going to be really easy too. All right, so I kind of like this idea, and now I have to communicate to the person reading my solution. So I'm going to finish out the idea here visually. Now I've dropped down a perfectly vertical line here. Let's see, I'm going to use uh, points. And over here, another perfectly vertical line is to drop down. And then to make these a little more obvious to see, I'm going to uh, I'll crosshatch them. I've already got a lot of colors in here, so let me use crosshatching. Okay, so here's our strategy for part B, the calculus calculation. The area is going to be equal to the area of the region below y equals to 4 square roots of x between x equal to a fourth and x equal to 25 fourths minus the area of the left crosshatched rectangle minus the area of the right cross hatched rectangle. So this will equal, and now it's going to be some subcalculations I want to go to. So down here, starting the subcalculation 
first that area below y equals 4 square roots of x. All right, so that would be definite integral 1 fourth, 25 fourths, 4 square roots of x dx. Okay, well, square root of x, that's x to the 1 half. So a nice power rule application. The force stays here. That goes x to the 1 half plus 1, 3 halves. Divide by 3 halves, that's like multiplying by 2 thirds. And that's between x being 1 fourth and x being 25 fourths. Okay, so this becomes, let's see, that's 8 thirds there. And inside here, 25 fourths in for x, going to the 3 half power, 1 fourth for x, going to the 3 halves power. All right, but wait a minute, 25 fourths, fortunately, happens to be 5 squared over 2 squared, or 5 halves squared. 1 fourth happens to be 1 half squared, so this goes on to become equal to 8 thirds. Now we could have 5 halves squared, then to the 3 halves power, minusing 1 half squared, then to the 3 halves power. Okay, got a nice law of exponents here. Multiply the exponents. Twos cancel out. Nice. Now it's just being cubed. So this becomes 8 thirds. So it would be 5 cubed over 2 cubed. 125 over 8 minus thing. Here, same idea. Exponential law gives you the cancellation of these twos, and it's one half cubed, which is one eighth. So this starts to look like eight thirds, one twenty five minus one, that's one twenty four over eight. Cancel those eighths. Uh, let's see, one twenty four, one and two and three and four, seven does not divide by three. No, okay, no further cancellations. We're 124 over to 3. We could carry this up into our main equation here, but as another subcalculation, okay, here's one subcalculation, a second subcalculation part of this. Okay, that left cross hash rectangle, 1 half base, we'll call it base 1, h1, I suppose, and one half. What about that left rectangle? That base goes from x a quarter to x equals to one. That's a three quarter inch length there. Its height, looking at the graph there, that y coordinate is up at two. Okay, so we get a cancel, cancel there, and we're left over with three fourths. Could carry that up into the main equation line here and go on and deal with the area of the right cross-hatched rectangle, triangle rather, one-half base 2 h2, and that will be one-half. That base starts with an x equal to 1, goes out to an x of 25 fourths. So let's see, that will be 21 fourths in overall length. And the height is 10. Okay, we get here, cancel, cancel, 5. All right, that gives us uh, 85 fourths. Okay, can bring this up into the main line. And now, let's see, the uh, all these subtractions together make a minus 88 fourths. Okay, down to uh, 58 thirds, which does not get any simpler. Call that square units. Okay. Part C. Assess the correctness of parts A and B.
by examining for a consistency between the two results. All right, for assessing the correctness, let's look back at the results that we've obtained. We had a graphic approximation that was 14. We just finished a calculus calculation, found it to be 58 thirds. Okay, to make a good comparison, let's get everything in terms of uh, decimal numbers here. So this 58 thirds, what's going on there? Let's see, that goes in 1, 28, 9, 27, 1. Okay, so this is about equal to 19.3. Wait a minute, 14 and 19.3. Okay, like a 10% error would be like about 2. This is, uh, what, oh, more than 5? So we're looking at, uh, 25, more than 25% error. Okay, this is too big. This is inconsistent. These two results. All right, so something's wrong. Could be in the calculus calculation, could be in the graphic approximation. Just have to go back and review everything. While my part B video was processing, I actually was looking at this very problem and I went back and I found out, you know what, right here, look at this, I did the uh, 21 by 5, I said 85 off the top of my head, and I, if I think about that again, no, that's, that's false, it's supposed to be 105. 105 over 4, okay, so now that will carry back to the main equation as 105 over 4, so then that would be minus 108 over 4 and 108 uh, let's see 4 divides that even it goes in and when I make 27 get built up with 3 over 3 that turns into 81 thirds and if I do 81 from 124 let's see there's 3 43 thirds square units. Okay, now let's go back and review this new calculus calculation is 43 thirds. That about equals to Okay, 3 goes into that once. We get uh, 13 left over. That would uh, be 4.3. Okay, there we go. Now look, now we're, well, let's see. Uh, 1.4 would be about 10%. Uh, 0 0.7 would be 5%. We're only 0 0.3 apart. Okay, these are now within 5%. Therefore, consistent. And now we think that the solutions to part A and B are likely correct. See, this is why we have the assessment of correctness, because you will never stop making arithmetics like this one here, right? No one ever stops. And so, by solving the problem two ways, demanding consistency between the two solutions, you can uncover vast majority of your errors as I've done here. I could, I'm making a video, right? I could have edited out this whole this little stuff here and proceeded with uh, everything just going along perfectly fine. But uh, you need to see this because this happens. I, I didn't try to make this mistake. It was uh, it just happened to me. But I had to use my own assessment of correctness to discover it. So hopefully this will be uh, motivation to you to solve math problems properly, and that is with two solutions and demanding consistency between the two of them so that you have yourself a, an assessment of correctness. Okay, so this means we can now write this down. Okay, so here we are. The new calculus calculation yields a result that is within 5% of the graphic approximation. Thus, the two results are consistent. Therefore, the solutions to parts A and B are now likely correct. Very good. Okay.